Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. After finishing Five Nights at Freddy's 3 and seeing both the endings, I believe I have collected the entire story of Five Nights at Freddy's. So let's begin. Our story starts at the original restaurant, Fred Bear's Family Diner. This location only held two animatronics, the Golden Spring Lock models of Freddy and Bonnie. As we see in the minigames in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the first murder happened outside the location by the mysterious purple man. After the child's death, the spirit of the child possesses the puppet and tries to seek vengeance against the purple man. This location, however, is shut down, perhaps because of the unresolved police inquiry about the missing child. After Fred Bear's family diner closes, the first Freddy Fazbear pizzeria opens. I believe that this location is where the rest of the murders occur. The Purple Man, potentially an employee at this time, uses the Golden Spring Locked Freddy costume to commit four more murders. The spirits that will become Chica, Bonnie, Freddy, and Foxy. Posters from Five Nights at Freddy's 1, as seen occasionally through the cameras, confirm that there was unresolved murders at this time. This is also supported by the fact that in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the phone guy reveals that the older models smell and didn't quite seem right. The first location closes. All the equipment is brought for parts to the new grand opening, which is where we begin the game Five Nights at Freddy's 2, which was revealed to be a prequel. The first phone call says something important, that we are the second in the night guard position. The original night guard being moved to the day shift. On the first night, it is important to note that only the toy models are active, but toy models are not possessed. They are very sophisticated and have facial recognition software tied into the criminal database, so they are not haunted. They do come after us, but they are not particularly aggressive. Perhaps they are just inquiring to see the new person and to try and match them against the facial recognition. The second night this all changes. The old animatronics which are the haunted ones, are now restless, but why? I believe it's because the purple guy is active again. The puppet believes that he has to protect any more children, so he awakens the spirits inside the old Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, and Foxy. This is why the models become active at night and start seeking for the purple man. People have suggested that Jeremy is the culprit and that that's why the animatronics are going after him. I do not believe this is the case. I believe that they are just mistaken and that the day shift guy is the murderer. They are confused though because the day shift guy used to work the night shift and that's why they come after Jeremy. We see that the puppet gives life to the animatronics in the Give Life minigame, but we don't know where it occurs. It could be that the spirits were left restless from the first Freddy's Pizzeria, or it could be that they were activated there and dormant until the purple guy started acting again. As the night progresses, Phone Guy mentions more and more, and also the minigames show us more. We realize there is a police investigation underway. It is not specifically mentioned, but we can assume that a sixth murder has occurred. Night 5 mentions that the previous employees are not allowed on the premises because of a lockdown, and that a new day shift is opening up. I believe this is because the day shift guy has been taken into custody by the police. But as we know from the newspaper clippings, the bodies are never found because they have been stuffed into the old suits and hidden in the safe room that is not on the map, not on the security cameras, and for liability reasons is never mentioned to family, friends, or anyone outside the diner. After night six, phone guy reveals what we did suspect. A suit was used, a golden one. Surely this was Golden Freddy's suit. The missing child is probably stuffed inside the suit, and while the suit is spring-locked, its animatronics cannot work. This shows us why the Golden Freddy is never walking around and is always limp. While the purple guy is in police custody, the day shift is now available for Jeremy, who is now going to take over the last event at this location. Phone guy instructs him to stand close to the models, as they have been acting very strange against adults, but not children. This is when the bite of 87 occurs. Tragically, Jeremy is bitten by one of the animatronics, and his frontal lobe is destroyed. We are not sure which robot conducted the bite. Some suspect Foxy definitely has the teeth for this, but he was in the back at the time and not likely to be on the day, as the old ones were just used for parts at that time. The most likely culprit is Mangle, the animatronic we don't really see again, and is the stand-in for the new Foxy. After the bite of 87 occurs, 
I believe that Jeremy was left in a coma or unable to contribute his side of the story. With no proper evidence to convict the day shift guy, I believe that Jeremy is taken into police custody as an invalid, unable to tell his side of the story, unable to plead for his innocence. This wraps up the inquiry, but leaves Day Guy the ability to continue his murders. This ends the events of Five Nights at Freddy's 2. It tells us at the end that it'll reopen with just the original animatronics, which will be refurbished. Which brings us to the beginning of the first game, Five Nights at Freddy's 1. The new location opens, and Phone Guy works for there for some time before he is either fired or is retiring. During this time, it seems that nothing too unusual occurs. Perhaps because the puppet and the animatronics know that the phone guy means him no harm, and they went into a dormant state. But the arrival of the new security guard seems to unease them. They become active and restless again, and begin hunting, trying to get in. During the end of the week, phone guy's message reveals he is trying to attempt to find out what is in the heads of the old animatronics. We hear him in a room, stuck, with the animatronics banging on the door. You can hear the music on the outside, so we know that Freddy is there. You never rescue Phone Guy. His fate, almost certainly dead and buried, somewhere on the location, and never heard from again. Why did he try and find out what was in the suits? I believe that while Phone Guy was not guilty of the murders, he does feel guilt. He knows Jeremy was innocent, and he was trying to redeem him, perhaps find evidence that could exonerate him. Even if he is still in a comatose state, or unable to live a full life, he seeks for vindication to rest his soul, and perhaps put a rest to all the spirits. The new guard, Mike Smith, makes it to the end of the week before being fired, and the location is shut down once more. This is where the first game ends, and Mike Smith disappears. Before the events of Five Nights at Freddy's 3, the minigames reveal that in the shutdown location, Purple Guy has returned. Perhaps hearing that the location was shut down, seeking to return to the scene of the crime, or just remove all the evidence. Wearing the suit again, he lures the animatronics one by one to the safe room, the room that they don't understand. They can't see it, it's invisible to them. This is why the error shows up in the minigames. They are unable to enter. As the costume they were following disappears, they turn away and try to return to their original location. That's when Pepper Guy springs and destroys them one by one, dispatching them quickly, as only someone with experience with the animatronics would know how. This is why I believe it is the day guy. He has experience. He's tampered with them before, messing with the facial recognition software when he was trying to avoid capture. However, after all the original four are destroyed, he is cornered by the spirits of the children. Now free from their cases and no longer bound by the rules of the animatronics, they can enter the safe room and corner him. He seems to run away. He tries to escape, but he can't get out of the room. The marionette's puppet leads the charge. He finds something in the room. The malfunctioning, spring-loaded model of Golden Bonnie. He didn't know that this one was malfunctioned, having no longer been in the premises when it was explained. He jumps in it, thinking perhaps it is Golden Freddy, not noticing that it is raining. This is important to note, as rain, moisture, even the slightest bit of disturbance can set the spring locks off. As you can see him laughing, thinking he has escaped death, able to safely wade out till the day again inside the golden model. The moisture breaks the spring lock. The endoskeleton snaps back into place, impaling him and sealing him inside his new coffin. Purple Guy's death is not in question here. But unfortunately, while the Purple Man was a monster in life, Springtrap becomes a nightmare in death. Springtrap is destined to have the fate of the victims he killed during his life, and now he'll forever stalk more victims in this eternal prison of the Golden Bonnie costume. Which brings us to the last game, Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Thirty years later, a new haunted attraction opens, Freddy's Fright, a haunted house based on the original pizzeria, and using original equipment from the first pizzeria. It seems urban legends have sprung up with the unsolved murders. People are interested in Freddy now. They want to see him and get scared. This even includes authentic attention to detail, such as faulty wiring that the original restaurant had. The new night shift guy takes his job, and all goes well until the second night. The workers uncover the hidden room, finding the spring trap, and bringing him to the new location. 
Springtrap now lurks the halls of Freddy's fright, attempting to continue his murderous rage. Now, depending on how you play, the story diverges. In the band ending, we see that the spirits are still trapped on Earth, as shown by the lights in their eyes of the animatronics' heads. However, in the good ending, we can see the spirits, souls, in the balloons ascending on the Happiest Day minigame, freeing them from their torment at last, and being able to move on to the next life. But Springtrap remains. Night 6, the Nightmare Mode, reveals that Freddy's Fright burns down. The newspaper clipping reveals that the remaining items are being sold at auction. But what caused it to burn down? Was it the new guy? being terrified of the hallucinations he saw inside the premises? Was it Springtrap, trying to murder anyone inside, or trying to end his fate? Perhaps it was just the faulty wiring. We can never be sure. So now maybe you're wondering, is this the end of Five Nights at Freddy's? Well, there are still two locations we have never seen. We haven't seen the original Fred Bear's Diner, apart from the minigames, and also the location before Five Nights at Freddy's 2. But what about a sequel? And is Springtrap still out there? Well, there was two interesting pieces of evidence for that. The first one was an email to the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's. However, I believe this was proven to be false. But there is one piece of evidence you may be interested in, and I'm going to show you how to find it and do this for yourself. Taking the newspaper clipping out of the assets from the game, we have the final screen that we see on the end of Night 6. Now... Looking at the picture, talking about the items that will be auctioned, first, we zoom in. It just looks like a large black area. We can't see much. So, what you do, adjust the brightness and contrast. So we're going to increase the brightness and lower the contrast. Then you go back, and I'm going to adjust the levels, and instantly. It's very easy to see that Springtrap is in the background, behind the doll. Springtrap survived the fire, Springtrap is being sold, and Springtrap will return. 